This is the Empowered Woman Show, episode number 30. Welcome to the Empowered Women Show, inspiring women with small voices but big dreams to step up and fulfill their extraordinary potential. And now your host, Casey Lightbody. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Empowered Woman Show. I'm your host, Casey Lightbody, and today we are joined by Beth Bilo. Now, Beth is the CEO and founder of The Introvert Entrepreneur, and she serves as a guide to introvert entrepreneurs who want to amplify their strengths and build sustainable, energetically aligned businesses. She's a professional coach, author, podcaster, and speaker. She's based in the Pacific Northwest, and she serves introverts worldwide. We have an amazing conversation today all about introverts, their strengths, and how to really promote yourself as an introvert, and I can't wait to dive in and share her story with you. Beth, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm absolutely thrilled that you're here, and thank you for sharing your your time with me. I can't wait to dive in. Welcome. Thank you, Casey. I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. I can't wait to dive in and share your story. So I'd love to ask you the first question, Beth, is what actually made you become an entrepreneur? And can you share with us your journey to the point that you are now with an amazingly successful coaching business called The Introvert Entrepreneur? Well, this is my second foray into official entrepreneurship. Um, The first time I actually left a job and said, I'm starting my own business. And I started a writing and communications business. And this was back in hmm, 2000, okay. I guess. So 15 years ago. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and so 15 flat. years <laughs> ago, I, I, I made the leap and, um, and was doing really well. And I was doing that for about six months. And then our life kind of had an upheaval and we decided to move. And when we moved, I found a dream job and kind of let that business go. So fast forward, maybe about 12 years, is that what you have? 12, 12-ish years or 10 years, okay. we made another move. <laughs> and so, you know, when, before I left um, my previous um, place that I lived, <laughs> I'm trying a blank. What was that? Yeah. What do you call that? The place you live. <laughs> when we left there, you know, I was traditionally employed and I didn't necessarily have any plans to be an entrepreneur. But when we moved out to the Pacific Northwest here in the United States, um, it was late 2007 and um, times were kind of tough. Um, You know, the the job market was really tight and I was um, my field was nonprofit administration and management. Mm -hmm. And I was finding it challenging to find, you know, the job that would rise to the level of what I had been doing before Mm -hmm. in terms of satisfaction and responsibility and use of my skills. And then I discovered coaching and I, um, I had heard of coaching. I'd even researched it, you know, several years before. And I remember thinking, Ooh, that sounds really cool. Can you make a living at that? You know, how do people do that? And, and it seemed like it was something for somebody else, not for me. Okay. Um, even though I was really interested into it, in it. So when I couldn't find a job, um, you know, I was having some difficulty here, all of a sudden it was an, it was one of many light bulb moments I think that have happened over the years, but I was like, coaching, this might be the opportunity to pursue coaching. So I have to be honest and say, you know, my first thought was not, oh, I'm going to start my own business. It was, I want to coach. Okay. And I think that probably happens for a lot of people. They'll say, I want to do my art. I want to, you know, do whatever their craft is. And and then they realize, oh, by making this choice, I'm becoming an entrepreneur. Um, So I sort of made that transition, um, a bit organically. And I would say it was driven mostly by saying, this is what I want to do in the world. And oh, if I'm going to do it, this is what it's going to require. It's going to require I start my own business and I, you know, do these things. And since I'd done it before, I knew I could do it again. And, um, and it was, it, it, uh, I don't know. It's just, yeah, like I said, I woke up and said, I want to be a coach. And entrepreneurship came along for the ride. Right. I'd love to dive in there. Thanks, Beth. I'd love to dive in there a little bit and actually really tap into what actually was so enticing about being a coach. How did you know, like, was there like a moment in time that you, you'd heard about coaching? And you were like, oh my goodness, this is really something that I want to do. What made you kind of tap into that and realize that that was actually something that you wanted to explore more and realize that that was actually what you really wanted to do? in the world. Yeah. 
it really, what I realized as I learned more about it is that it brought together so many things that were important to me. Um, personal growth, which was something that I had been, you know, interested in for a long time, even before I really knew what it was. Mm. <laughs> um, and, and actually I have to say, you know, ever since I can remember, I've always been, um, I've, I've always been the, the type of person for two things. One, people will talk to me and say, wow, I just met you, but I just told you my life story. Okay, okay. <laughs> or I feel like I can tell you anything. Yes. So I've always been this safe person, okay. you know, somebody that people trust. And then I, my, the words that are magic to my ears are, that's a great question, you know, or nobody's ever asked me that before. And I've always, from the time I can, you know, remember hearing that, I've always gotten a charge out of that. You know, it just, it makes me happy. And so it, coaching really brings that into it because yeah. coaching is all about inquiry mm-hmm. and reflection and asking questions. And, and I must say it appeals to my introvert nature as well, because it really requires putting yourself aside to some degree and really reflecting and shining the light on somebody else Mm -hmm. and helping them, you know, find their truth and being that safe presence for them. And I find that role very comfortable. Um, I think because of my introvert nature and then just because of, of who I am. So it just brought together so many, um, pieces and, and formed a really nice picture for me. You know, you've raised a really good point there, Beth. I think the one thing that I really wanted to highlight was that you were really open to listening to the feedback that was coming back from you, back at you, and really being open to hearing that one of your key skills was being able to um, provide a safe space for people to share and be vulnerable and, you know, uh, open themselves up to you. And that really lends itself to coaching, as you said. And I think that's a you know, if you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur, whether you're an introvert or not, I think it's having, being open to really listening to what's coming back at you. Um, because sometimes, you know, that, that whole idea of your inner critic gets the better of you and you can't actually see what your strengths are, I think, oftentimes. So okay. I think that's a, that's a great point that you raised there, Beth. Would you agree? I do. I do. And I think that um, when we're playing to our strengths and we get to use them on a regular basis and make them stronger, that's when work ceases to become work. And it's it's a little more play. Um, It doesn't mean it's always easy, but um, there's less resistance. And I believe in working hard, but I also believe in working smart. And um, and there needs to be a balance. It can't all be hard work and a fight, you know, Um, there needs to be some ease. Mm -hmm. And I think when you start to experience that ease, that's when you have um, found that place where you're in the flow of your strengths. Absolutely. And that's great. That leads me on to a great point, actually, Beth, is that firstly, when did you identify that you were an introvert? Um, Like, have you always known that? And then the second part of that question is, like we've touched on actually tapping into the strengths of being an introvert. So in terms of that, what, what do you think the key strengths of an introvert are? Yeah. So I first, um, realized I was an introvert. I I think I knew I was, um, I always thought I was shy, which I think is probably true for a lot of introverts. I thought that I was, you know, not particularly socially adept, um, for the longest time, I knew that large groups of people overwhelmed me and that I preferred to have smaller groups of friends and um, love to read and, you know, that sort of thing. So lots of typical introvert things. But it was officially confirmed for me when I was in graduate school. So this was 1993-ish. Okay. <laughs> and um, the Internet was still fairly new to being used on a, on a wide scale. And so it was very novel. And, and I remember I was at um, Indiana University and I was sitting in the, the basement of the student center using the computers because that's where you had to go if you wanted a computer. And, uh, I remember I was on those Yahoo. days. <laughs> Do you? I know. I kind of miss them, you know? It's like you have to go out of your way to get to a computer. Exactly. And now they're in our pocket. So, um, but I was on Yahoo and I loved to take personality assessments. Um, you know, anything that would tell me something about myself. And I stumbled upon the Myers-Briggs and took um, one of those online and discovered I was an INFJ, um, introvert, intuitive, feeling, judging. And the, I think the, it was all informative, but the introvert piece was what really stuck with me mm-hmm. because it was the first time I had seen a definition of it being that it was about where you get your energy 
and how you're oriented to the world. So it was not about being shy or whether or not I had social skills. It had to do with, you know, where I gained and drained energy. And that was extremely liberating. Um, it was really important to me. And so now as I work with it more and discover more of the strengths of it, especially as an entrepreneur, I think that, um, you know, our, like you were saying, our ability to reflect and be able to, um, take in information and synthesize and do something with it is, is really a, a powerful tool, especially in the beginning, because you can stay attuned to, uh, what's working and what's not, or how you feel about certain things, mm -hmm. um, what you think about certain things. And, um, and you're more likely, I think, to give yourself space to reflect on all of that and to really form your own opinions, you know, like listen to your gut mm, instead of exactly. trying to follow what everybody else is saying that you should or shouldn't be doing. Um, and I think in the beginning, that independent streak was also really um, powerful um, fuel, okay. I think, in the beginning, because I was so fired up about what I was doing and um and I was so curious that I wanted to be able to like figure out all of the different pieces for myself, just like any other strength that can be a weakness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that, you know, that independent streak, that, that curiosity can be something that can be, um, especially in the beginning can really power you through those times when it feels a little rough or, you know, feels you, you're, you're wondering what the heck did I get myself into? Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. That's a great yeah, point. Just kind of lean into that. Mm, mm, I love that bit. So, so when did you then decide to really niche your coaching business or was it from, from the very start that you decided I'm an introvert. I actually want to work with introverts too. This is my niche and this is where I really want this. This is the, this is the, um, these are the people that I really want to help. Did you do that right from the yeah. beginning or, or what did it kind of evolve into that? Well, this is, this gets into what I experienced, I think is the biggest challenge I had when I started my business. Okay. And that was identifying my niche. Okay. Um, because when you train to be a coach, they say, you know, the advertisements say, come be a life coach, you know, be a life coach, be a life coach. And then you get into training and they say, okay, you're a coach, but don't call yourself a life coach. It's too generic. It's too broad. You know, people don't understand. It sounds woo woo, you know, it's right. like, ah, what am I supposed to do? Mm. And, and, um, and the more I read about what made a successful business, what made a successful coach, it was really about finding your niche. And so I went on this in typical Beth and introvert fashion on this huge research project of like finding everything out I could about identifying your niche and, and how to do it and the ins and outs and rights and wrongs. And, and I, um, and I kind of drove myself crazy. <laughs> I, I really, you know, started to, I, I went through what I call my niche du jour period okay. where it's like, <laughs> okay, it. <laughs> I'm going to focus on women who want to make a difference in the world, or I'm going to focus on, you know, socially conscious entrepreneurs, or, you know, I, I would sort of, you know, skip around and, or I'm going to focus on nonprofits because that's my background, yes. but none of them st stuck, you know, yeah. none of them really had any staying power. So finally, I kind of hit a wall with it. And, and I'll forever be grateful to one of my friends. Um, her name is Lynn. I was, you know, having one of my little meltdowns about all of this. And she said, you know, Beth, are you trying to find one niche that's going to fill all of your needs? You know, that's going to meet all of your interests. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, yes, I am. You know, it was just, it was such a perfect question for me at that mm, moment. Mm. Um, because I realized, yeah, I was trying to find the perfect niche. niche that's incredible. And as long as I was trying to do that, I wasn't going to find it. No, you know, no. I, I, it wasn't going to happen. So I let go of trying to figure it out. And I said, I haven't even been coaching long enough to know who I work best with, yeah. or who I like to work with, you know? Um, so I gave myself some space and just kind of coached, coasted a little bit, you know, just tried to find my voice. Um, and I'll make this quick, you know, this, this segues, that was the challenge, you know? Yes. And so I addressed it by basically letting it go right. and saying, okay, okay I'm, I'm going to just be open. Yeah. 
So then just giving yourself one day permission. I said, okay, mm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Giving myself permission to just like be with it without mm. forcing mm. something that I knew was important, mm. but that couldn't be forced. Yeah. And, um, and one day it was December of 2009. I sat down and I opened up a notebook and I was like, well, you know, I'm just curious. I, I'm going to write out like little mini profiles of each of my clients. And I think at the time I was working with about eight people and I wrote down, you know, name, age, profession, gender, what they came to coaching for, what we seem to be working on, you know, looking for themes and all of that. And because, like I said before, I've always been interested in personalities and personal growth and whatnot. I had written in the margins what I guessed if they were an introvert or an extrovert. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I noticed that all of them, but one, I was guessing was an introvert. And I thought, huh, that's really interesting. All introverts. And then I closed the notebook and put it away. <laughs> <laughs> did not make any connection at that moment. Yeah. And it was, it was like five and a half months later, I was in a workshop, a business development workshop. And the facilitator, her name was Julie, was talking about um, finding your ideal market mm -hmm. and talking about demographics and psychographics. <laughs> and I, and I had that light bulb moment. And, and what was interesting is even though it was six months later and I probably have a million notebooks going at the same time, yeah. I had the notebook that I had written those profiles in with me. It was the one I was taking notes in the workshop. And so when she said that, and I don't think she used the phrase like personality or anything like that, but something clicked for me and I looked, you know, quickly flipped through my notebook and found where I'd written those profiles. And I was like, introvert, introvert, introvert. And I think I raised my hand. I said, I coach introverts. <laughs> oh, wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. And so, so what was, it, it was so cool because um, it was so um, not me in yes. some ways. Yes. Um, because the normal me would not have said anything, you know, would not have claimed it right in that moment, would have run home, done all the research, research. <laughs> you know, been like, who else is doing this? And blah, 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 you know. But instead, no, it's like I left that workshop saying I coach introverts and, you know, and then the introvert entrepreneur kept bumping around in my head and, and, uh, I didn't know quite what it meant, but it was what just kept coming to me. Yes. So when the URL was available, I was like, it was meant to be, <laughs> I love that. it was waiting for me. I love that too. Um, yeah. So so I think, you know, the, the bottom line, the lesson for me that I've tried to continue to carry forward is like, when I feel like I'm hitting that wall, that's a signal that I'm getting too attached to something or that um, I'm forcing something. And then I just need to let it go. Mm. Um, as the song in Frozen is, yeah. let it go. Oh, no, no, no. I think I'll segue into that now. <laughs> Exactly. I love that. Let it go. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it's just, I, it, it, it sound maybe, you know, to some, it might sound cliche or it's, you know, overused, but it is so powerful, um, to just stay open mm -hmm. and unattached to see what shows up. Absolutely, Beth. And you know, it comes up, it, it's actually coming up more and more. And I think you've raised such a good point is that we've been in business. So, and you know, it's maybe a phrase that's been overused to this whole idea of masculine power versus feminine power, you know, and I think this whole idea of masculine power and we're in business and it's all around strategy and implementation and getting things done. Yeah. And what you've really highlighted here is actually just giving yourself permission to just, as you say, be in the moment and actually just let it go without trying to force something that's really not coming to you then or perhaps it's out of your control or it's just it, you know the penny's not dropping just there and then so to stop trying to right. just force it you know and I think that's that's really a, a, a skill I think that we've got as um, women and possibly as introverts is actually mm -hmm. being able to just be I think yeah. Um, yeah. Just to be with it and, and to, to release, um, I don't feel like a particularly competitive person, but I think we can get into being competitive or territorial and, and things like that. And that can drive, um, you know, us to force things when, um, when really we just have to remember that we're, another cliche, we're only in competition with ourselves, exactly. you know, exactly. and, 
And so I don't want to fight with myself. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be in competition with myself in a, in a negative way. Yeah. Um, I just want to grow. So, yeah. I love that. And so Beth, what's really firing you up with, I know what's on the horizon actually, but I'd love for you to share with our listeners, what's really firing out you up with your business at the moment? I have a book coming out. Yeah, um, and, oh, I, I, I should, I have galleys and I should have a copy that I can hold up. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> <Not one. laughs> um, maybe we can edit that in later. You can show me going. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs> um, but I have a book coming out in November. Um, it's being published by Perigee Books, which is an um, imprint of Penguin. And um, and so far, I know that it's coming out, of course, in the United States. It'll be printed in the UK and the Virgin um, imprint. And then we just sold the rights to China. So it will be in Chinese, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So I'm hoping that it's um, international uh flavor will continue to expand as we get closer to publication. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited for the possibilities of that book. Um, it's, it's called the introvert entrepreneur, amplify your strengths and create success on your own terms. And really the subtitle sums it up perfectly of, of what the um, objective of the book is. And, and, it, and the word amplify, it might seem kind of contrary to introvert, but, but really what it means, just kind of turn up the volume a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. to, to learn how to take what's inside all of those treasures and how to project them in an introverted way that will help you to succeed in your business and create something sustainable and, and to do it on your own terms. Um, so it covers everything from, you know, finding your voice, finding your niche to um, the sales and marketing and self-promotion aspects, as well as collaborating with others and expanding your business. And then some of my favorite parts have to do with facing fear. Um, you know, we have to acknowledge that we can be super excited about something, but we can also have a lot of fear. And, um, you know, even the book, I'm, I'm so excited about it and I'm terrified, (laughs) you know, I just have to say I'm terrified, Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you, you, I just don't, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I have optimistic feelings about it, but I would not be being honest if I didn't say that it's scary. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that sounds so excited. And I honestly can't wait for it. I can't wait to dive in. It's just, <laughs> oh my you. gosh, it's going to be amazing. But Beth, I'd love to touch Thank a little you. bit on um, on actually the contents of the book because you raised some interesting points. And I think it's really uh, timely actually to touch on two things that you spoke about. The one thing is actually sales and marketing as an introvert. And I know that's a huge topic, but the whole idea of self-promotion in a really authentic, real, genuine way, I think is very common for introverts. I think we, we, we really despise this whole idea of living out out loud and really being, um, what's the word, like the hard selling, brash kind of marketing, you know, that really gets what certainly gets to me. And I know my audience, that's something that comes up all the time, you know, can you share with us any of your thoughts around what we can do and how we can actually market ourselves and get our message and um, mission out into the world, but in an introverted, quiet way? Yeah. Thank you for that question, because it comes up so often, they'll say, you know, do I have to do that? Mm. And that being whatever the latest, brightest, shiniest thing is that seems to be antithetical, the antithesis of, mm. of the way we like to operate as, um, you know, sometimes as women, you know, I, mm-hmm. I think that's part of it, but also, you know, as quieter or, on, or um, introverted. And, you know, so my first thing would be to, to drop the assumptions that number one, that it's working for them because we never know. Exactly. So again, that so takes away that comparison game, mm-hmm. um, you know, because we think, oh, if they're all doing it, it must be working. Well, I don't know. Is it? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to drop the assumption that th- that it's working and that if you did it, that it would work for you. Um, because what's most important is that you are projecting your true self. Um, it sounds pretty simple, but I think that the way you cut through the noise is by being your own authentic voice and not trying to imitate someone else, not trying to be louder than someone else. I think that it's so noisy that if somebody is really clear 
and intentional and um, confident, that is what slices through. Mm -hmm. Um, Somebody who's not trying to jump on board with whatever the next, you know, big thing is. So I think it's really important to like find the places where you feel that you are most yourself, where you feel like you can be your natural voice the most Mm -hmm. and build your community in that space. Um, It might be somewhere on social media, like Twitter or Facebook. It might end up being oddly enough, something that's in person, like forming meetup groups, Mm -hmm. you know, or or creating your own, you know, coffee hour on Saturday mornings or something. Um, The the important thing is that you're doing it on your own terms, Mm -hmm. you know, that you're Mm -hmm. kind of in control of the situation and you're you're creating what it is that um, people are coming to. Um, But I think it's, it's a lot about, you know, and this goes back to niche as well. I think when it comes to promoting yourself in marketing, I think an introvert um, does well to figure out where they want to focus so that you don't have to disperse your energy over Jeez. the masses. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm going to have to, if I'm going to need to project my energy outward, I would much rather be projecting it out to a very focused group of people who are going to hear it and, and to whom my message with whom my message will resonate as opposed to trying to be all things to all people. Yeah. Um, so I think that that finding that niche, finding what your core message is, is so really the key to having the energy to do all of those, those other things. And I would challenge my assumptions about um, things like public speaking or networking. You know, we're often told stories or we tell ourselves, I'm not very good at that. Or, you know, I have to do it this way or else I'm not going to be successful. You know, there are a lot of introverted public speakers Mm -hmm. um, and um, and they love it. I'm one of them. I love public speaking. And there are lots of introverts who are really savvy networkers because they're really good listeners, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and they're not trying to work the room. They're trying to make connections. They're trying to build relationships. So I think that's, I remember one year I thought, I need a marketing plan for this year. And then I thought, no, it's not really a marketing plan. It's a communications plan. And then I said, no, it's not even that. It's a relationship building Mm -hmm. plan. So I think shifting, you know, the emphasis from like, I have to make a sale or I have to get a client to saying, I want to build relationships can help shift it and, and make it much more about the message and less about you or what you're selling. Oh, I think that is perfect. And I am a huge advocate, Beth. I love that you ended it with that whole idea of building a relationship because really that's all that I think marketing is, you know, having, I completely think that's, um, you know, I moved to Brisbane, oh, it must be eight years ago now, and we'd never set foot in Australia before. We'd never, I'd never been to Brisbane and I knew the sum total of two people, two people. That's that's all I knew in the whole whole country, you know, and um, really my focus has always been on building relationships and that's what's you know grown my marketing business and now uh, uh, the empowerment revolution and and so I love that you've uh, you've really you know honed in on that I think it's just such that really is the the crux of it and as you say being really clear on identifying Mm -hmm. what your message is because I think if you can communicate that and have the relationship then the two together really just form the, the your marketing message really, you know, and, and getting your word yeah. out there. So, so Beth, I'd love to touch on a little bit of, of, of how you actually identified where you are most comfortable in terms of getting your message out. You touched on how you love mm-hmm. public speaking. You do the one-on-one one coaching, I think still, and um, you've obviously yeah. published your book now. Um, so there's a couple of platforms. I know you've got a, a huge Facebook um, community as well. So how did you really tap into where you were most at ease. It's interesting that you named all of those because I think the thing that I'm most at ease with is my podcast. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm at ease with all of those other things. Yes. You know, I, 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 those are all things that I think, um, have come naturally to some degree. Um, but especially like writing, because okay. that's something that I, you know, have, have felt confident about for a long time. And then once you find your voice and your message, it's like, boom, you know, it becomes so much easier. Yeah. Um, but I think what has been the most surprising and satisfying um, platform and 
um, medium for me has been my podcast. Um, I've been doing it for a little over five years now and it has, it has, you know, I didn't know this when I started it, but it's, it's really like the perfect platform for an introvert. Um, because I get to prepare, I have an excuse to reach out to people that I'd love to talk to that I might normally not necessarily know why or how I would approach them, you know, so I have something to offer them. Um, it's not about me, but I'm providing that safe space. I get to ask questions just like you're asking me terrific questions. Um, and then I get to put it out there with the pressure, push of a button Mm. and it can reach, you know, thousands of people. And, um, and so there's something about that, that is that perfect combination of solitary work, being in relationship with someone else, and then broadcasting it out that has, um, that has been, you know, one of the biggest surprises I think in my business is how powerful that piece has been. Mm, mm, I couldn't agree more, but now, I mean, my podcast is very new in comparison, you know, but it feels like I've come home when I do it. I absolutely love it. You know, I absolutely love it. So I'm so, I totally agree with you on that one. (laughs) And five years. And it's such a natural approach. And, and, you know, it really goes to that, you know, how do you market or self promote yourself? I think a lot of it is finding that platform where you feel like you are your truest voice. Mm -hmm. And for the introvert, it doesn't necessarily mean writing. It could mean podcasting or the public speaking or doing a video blog or, you know, some other medium that might seem a little unconventional, but, Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, you might surprise yourself. I love that. And I think it's really important. You raise a really good point there, Beth, is that it's actually really good to experiment because you may not actually know. You might have this actual block or, uh, you know, something that, like, like you mentioned, public speaking. Our introverts don't public speak, you know, but really I think the whole idea is actually just get out there and have a little bit of a go and really then see, uh, just experiment and see what really fits with you. And I think that's a, that's a really good point that you raise, Beth. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's all in the spirit of fail often and fail fast. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, be willing to just try some things out, know that some things will work and others won't. And to just know that that's part of the journey. Mm, mm, that's a great point. So Beth, do you have a favorite quote or, or um, like a business quote or a life quote that you live by? That's like asking me to choose my favorite pet or <laughs> you know, my favorite it's a hard one, isn't it? Really like just blow my mind. Um, you know, when I think about, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's, uh, shoot, it went out of my mind. You're going to have to edit this. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> no um, you know, because there, you know, I mean, there's a couple, and I guess from a business perspective, there are two that I, I just want to quick, and they're very short. Mm-hmm. One is Wayne Gretzky, and he says, um, "You always miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take." And I remember the first time I heard that, it was like, "Yeah, if I don't ask, if I don't try, if I don't try to make that shot, then it's like I'm saying no." on behalf of the universe, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it's, I'm making up the universe's mind. I'm making up your mind, um, before you've even had a chance to respond. So, so that one has been, um, really powerful. And it's also another one that gives you permission, I think in a sort of backwards way to make mistakes, you know, to fail. Um, it's acknowledging that you're going to, um, and then another one that I don't know who to attribute it to, but um, I think it's particularly from a marketing standpoint, it's a really brilliant concept. And it is a confused mind always says no. That's and huge. and so for me, it's a reminder as somebody who can use too many words, as is evidenced in our conversation, um, <laughs> you know, can be verbose or um, try to compli- likes, you know, complicated things and all of that. It's a reminder to make keep it simple you know, to strip something down to its essence, because if you're confusing somebody, you know, in this day and age, especially our attention spans are teeny tiny, shorter than a goldfish, Mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. If you confuse somebody, you you know, you probably have just like a second or two. And, and if you confuse them in that second or two, they're just going to tune out. And, um, and I think as marketers, as entrepreneurs, we need to be really cognizant of that. Um, that, that we have to always be looking at things and saying, is this clear? 
is this simple? Can somebody get it really quickly? And it takes a lot of work to make something simple. Um, so I think it's something always to try for. Oh, I could not agree more. Honestly, I think, um, oh, I, I, I 100% agree with that. I love that quote, actually. I might put that up because as someone who's also yes. verbose and really struggles to be succinct, it's like you said, but it's really, really hard to actually mm. simplify things and get it really that, as you say, people can actually get it within a couple of seconds, you know, and I think um, that's a really yeah. great quote to, to remind everybody, not just introverts, but I think everybody is... Um, Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs that are marketing themselves just keep it simple and um I love that quote. And the, the other one that you touched on was, I think, very, very relevant as well, because I always talk about stepping off the sidelines and getting on the court. And I think that's what's so important for us is that you've got to be willing to actually, and we touched on this on our interview, is not actually stepping out of your comfort zone, but actually just expanding your comfort yes. zone, actually just taking that next step. It's, it's not a, it doesn't have to be a huge mm -hmm. step, but it's just taking that step and actually getting on a sport to use in the sporting analogy getting on the court and actually playing right being being playing the yes. game yeah and you're reminding me if you would ask the question what quote do you like the least <laughs> <laughs> it would be those ones that are saying like nothing good comes out of your comfort zone you know or life begins at the end of your comfort zone and it's like hogwash <laughs> you know your comfort zone serves a really powerful purpose especially for introverts um, because it's a place where we recharge and get the energy and get the ideas to go out and and as you and I talked about in that podcast interview um, it's about expanding it and, and hopefully the idea is that as you're trying new things, you're increasing your comfort with them. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, your comfort zone is always going to be getting bigger and, and you can get strength from that. Exactly. And you, you, I thought had a perfect term for it. You called it your capacity zone, uh, Beth. And I love that analogy. I thought that was such a great way Thank of you. describing it. I thought it was awesome. So, um, Thank you. So Beth, I'd love to ask you, do you have someone, a woman in your life or someone that you look really look up to that really inspires you in business? <laughs> I have to think about this. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. I know. I'm like, I'm so anti-guru. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I can so I tell I? that. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so you know, that's a great question because I don't tend to like, um, to follow, you know, people. Um, I, I'm a little bit just like I'm anti shaming the comfort zone. I'm a little bit anti guru. <laughs> um, but that said, you know, I have encountered women that have had really powerful messages. And the one that, that pops into my head was someone I heard at the world domination summit last year. Um, and her name is Jada Selma. And I'm hoping I'm remembering to pronounce her name correctly, but she is the founder of Simple Green Smoothies. And um, she came out on stage and <laughs> even just thinking about it, I tear up a little bit. It's like I'm getting a little choked up because she came, you know, she, she came out on stage, she's just this beautiful presence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here she is in this auditorium with like, you know, 3,000 people. And she comes out and she's completely silent. And she smiles and she looks around the room, you know, and then she begins and she tells, she, um, recites a, I, I don't know if you could call it a poem, but you know, sort of a prose, um, that tells the story of her journey, you know, her life and, and, and it was so powerful. And then she just was really vulnerable, really open, um, really inspiring. And so, you know, she is one and she is one of so many women I've seen, you know, get up on the stage and really, um, be, you know, expose themselves, mm -hmm. you know, make themselves vulnerable mm -hmm. in a way that uh, you just you don't feel alone. Um, you feel like um, that there's a lot of power in owning who you are, where you've been. And owning where you want to go, you know, mm -hmm. she, she was humble, but she was celebrating, 
um, the success that she'd had that, you know, she had grown her social media followers to be in the, you know, hundreds of thousands and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, these other accomplishments and it wasn't boastful. Um, but it was just, you know, I set a vision, I set a goal and I did it. And, um, and so, you know, she comes to mind as, as one that has crossed my path and she's actually one that I profile in my book. Um, she lends some wisdom in there that, um, that, yeah, I, I really admire and look up to. And, and like I said, she's one of so many that are, are blazing that trail. So, so many to, to look up to. Beth, it's so funny that you mentioned her because you're not going to believe it, but she's actually coming out to Australia next month. She's coming to speak oh. at Pro Blogger, and I'm going to be there. So I just got goosebumps hearing that you're actually talking about <laughs> that. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to experience that for myself firsthand, which I'm so excited about now which is just oh, awesome. Yeah. It is. It's such a small world. But you know what? And I, th- I think just, you know, that you that you struggled to come up with that, that one person, but you actually resonated, I think, with someone who, as you said, could stand up there in their power, in their quiet power, and really embrace their vulnerability and be able to share the story from, you know, where they came and be able to then celebrate in a really authentic, genuine manner, the way that the the journey that they've been on and what they've been able to achieve, you know, and I'm actually reading funny enough, Brene Brown's Daring Greatly at the moment too. So it's all around vulnerability. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And there's, and that's always going to be a question, especially for women because um, vulnerability has not always been, something that has been rewarded mm-hmm. or encouraged or prized. And I have found that the more vulnerable I am, the more I connect with people, mm-hmm. the more I, you know, create relationship. And of course you can cross a line and go too far, but I always trust myself that I won't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And, and I trust myself if I do, I can handle it. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic advice. And it actually leads me so awesomely into my next question, Beth, is what do you think is the single biggest barrier to entry for female entrepreneurs today? I do think that it's that, um, that vulnerability piece. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it. And mm, actually, I'm going to take that back. Okay. You know, what I have noticed um, so often, and I hate to say it, but I've noticed women undervaluing themselves so often. I think that that is such a barrier to them taking their business, moving their business from being a hobby or being something they're dabbling in or something they're spending money on um, to something that's bringing them money. Um, They will undercharge for their services. they, they aren't vulnerable in the sense that they're talking with other people about what they're making, what they're charging, what are, you know, what's, what's a good market rate. You know, I mean, it gets, you're talking about money mm. and it's, um, it's hard, but it's, it's part of the definition of being an entrepreneur. And I think we have to embrace that. And some women are great at it. So I don't mean to generalize and say that as a whole, it's something that we are, you know, not good at, mm. but it is something that I've noticed that if there's ever this soft spot, it's around how much should I charge? Am I charging too much? Am I offering too much? You know, there's an awareness of it, but there's not always um, the uh, the comfort mm-hmm. or the willingness to be vulnerable enough to to address it um, mm-hmm. and to stand in their value. Um, uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, one of the things that I don't remember where I picked up this idea, but that when we're thinking about our value, it's not just about us. Mm -hmm. It's about our profession. It's about our peers. And so if I decide I'm going to charge $50 for an hour of coaching, I'm not just diminishing me and what I have to offer. I'm diminishing my entire profession. I'm lowering the bar for my peers. And, um, and again, it's, it's not, 
across the board, but it is something that, like I said, if, if there's going to be a soft spot, that's where it tends to be. Yeah, I love that. I think, and I agree with you too, Beth. I think oftentimes, but you, as you say, you know, it's not just undervaluing you as an individual, but it's your whole profession and, and, and that kind of thing too. I think that's a really, really great point, Beth. So if, so in conclusion then, I'd love to just wrap up with what would, if, if you could leave one piece of advice for any introverted women entrepreneurs to be able to find their voice and to amplify their message, what would it be? Hmm. I come down to being willing, being willing to fail. And I don't even like that word, Mm -hmm. being willing to experiment. And then the phrase that has moved me through so many things, and that is be open to outcome, not attached. So that's, you know, that goes for introverts, women, entrepreneurs, everybody, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you know, to be willing to um, be open to what might happen and not get overly attached to things so that we end up putting on these blinders that keep us from um, creating possibility, you know, um, you know, I think we, I think that especially for introverts, we can waste a lot of energy when we're forcing things or if we're, you know, have those blinders on, we might think that we're focused, but we're really like mm, using an intensity that, that might not be serving us. So it's much more liberating and freeing sometimes to be open and, and not attached. Oh, I love that advice. What awesome, awesome way to end because I think it comes full circle actually and actually what we were talking about, that whole idea of how you actually were stuck and then really just were mm-hmm. open to letting it go and letting it, let, letting go yeah. of the, the, the need to figure out your niche right at the beginning and look what you know, you've managed to achieve as a result of that, Beth. And I would love for you to really share with us our audience now where can they find you online because you've got some amazing resources well, thank you um my business hub would be my web page which is the introvert entrepreneur.com and then you'll find the blog and the book and the podcast and information about coaching services as well as um, a section i'm really excited about which is just called resources um but it includes um a short introvert quiz and uh, recommendations of sites that I hope are useful for entrepreneurs, as well as a page I call introvert voices that includes you um, that, you know, showcases um, other people who are working in this introvert space and that are champions for introverts. Um, So please join me there. And then in terms of social media, I'm most active on Facebook and trying to step up my Twitter a little bit. (laughs) Um, So join us on Facebook. And that is backslash the introvert entrepreneur. And on Twitter, um, my handle is introvert coach. Beth, thank you so much. Uh, It truly, as honestly, has been such an incredible conversation. Your insights, your wisdom, and your advice have just been so inspiring. And I'm sure there's a million nuggets of takeaways in there. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And that wraps up another episode of the Empowered Women Show. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And if you have a chance and you enjoyed this episode, it would really mean the world to me if you would head on over to iTunes and leave me an honest rating and review of the show. That way you'll help boost rankings and really shine the spotlight on these amazing women guests. You'll find the link in the show notes over at www.empoweredwomenrevolution.com. Thank you so much and see you next time.